Hi, this is Ryan Broderick. First, I'd like to thank Sages for the invitation and the opportunity to present on this interesting topic. I'll be discussing the endoscopic anterior stapled fundoplication. I have nothing to disclose. Briefly, because I know that this has probably been touched on before, reflux is thought to affect a significant portion of the Western world and is primarily managed with lifestyle modification and medication. However, a significant portion of those patients are refractory to medical management in which surgical intervention has proven long-term efficacy for refractory reflux. But it is invasive and has a known side effect profile. Endoscopic therapies, including MUSE, have been developed to fill that treatment gap between medical management and surgical intervention. The MUSE is the Medicus Ultrasonic Surgical Endostapler. As you can see, it looks very much like a traditional flexible endoscope, although the device is designed specifically for an anterior stapled fund application. The FDA approved the device for treatment of reflux in 2012, of which UCSD was part of that FDA trial. As far as patient selection, uh, indications for use are reflux refractory to high dose BID PPI treatment with pH less than four for more than 7% of the time or four to 7% of the time with 50% symptom correlation, as well as findings of esophagitis. Contraindications include a larger uh, hiatal hernia, significant comorbidity, BMI of over 35, or advanced esophageal changes from reflux, including Barrett's grade four esophagitis or esophageal stricture. As an overview of the device, it is a flexible endoscope. It features an endostapler in the device tip, as well as an ultrasound transducer, and delivers 4.8 millimeter B-shaped titanium surgical staples. It is designed like a traditional endoscope, which is one of the benefits of the device in that um, it allows direct visualization with the camera and is a tool that many surgeons are familiar with. Also unique to the device are, is the ultrasound, uh, ultrasonic transducer allows determination of correct tissue density prior to firing the staple. The procedure itself is an outpatient procedure that's performed under general anesthesia. An overtube is placed in the endoscopic stapler inserted and retroflexed. The staple uh, uh, load is positioned three centimeters above the Z-line. Uh, complete retroflexion, the tissue is clamped. The ultrasound transducer measures the tissue density to ensure that it's within the uh, indications for use. And repeated multiple firings are made along the anterior uh, portion to make a partial fun application or a flap valve. Here's a before and after example from uh, uh, UCSD at the time of the FDA trial, where you can see before the device was used, and then after you have a partial anterior multiplication, three centimeters in length. This was the study that was uh, submitted for FDA trial. It was a multi-center perspective study involving six international sites that evaluated 66 patients who underwent endoscopic anterior fund application with the MUSE device between 2008 and 2010. Primary endpoint was greater than 50% reduction in GERD HRQL scores, the secondary endpoints of pre and post procedure PPI usage, esophageal acid exposure, manometry, and changes in Hill grade scores. You can see with the, the results at six months for the primary endpoint, which was the HRQL scores, 72% of patients had at least a 50% reduction in their GERD score. 83.8% of those patients were no longer taking PPI or any other acid suppressive medications. 11% of patients maintained their current dose with 3% had an increased dose. 
intraesophageal pH monitoring showed a 45% reduction in total time with pH less than four, which was significant. There were no major changes with manometry or LES pressure. The Hillgrid scores were um, of greater than two were decreased by 93%. You can also see there's a significant reduction in total episodes of reflux between baseline and six months after the surgery. There were eight serious adverse events, all noted in the first 24 patients. Four were rated mild and required uh, additional observation in the hospital. Two were asymptomatic pneumomediastinum or pneumoperitoneum, which recovered without intervention. One was a post-procedure empyema, which required drainage antibiotics, and one gastrointestinal bleed, which no obvious identified source and resolved with uh, blood transfusion. Both protocol and device changes were implement implemented uh, after these events with no further leaks or pneumomediastinum seen in the remaining patients. Longer-term follow-up uh, has been published as well. This was an extension of the six-month trial with four-year results in 37 of the patients. Again, the primary endpoint remained the same, uh, greater than 50% reduction in GERD HRQL scoring. Secondary endpoints were pre- and post-procedure PPI usage, manometry, and esophageal pH monitoring were not repeated for this study. Here you can see that the mean GERD scores improved from 29 average pre-procedure to 8.9 at six months with a sustained improvement at four years. You can see that treatment effect was carried through for all four years. Uh, Follow-up, 83.8% and 69.4% of patients were uh, off daily PPIs at six months and four years respectively. You can see that treatment effect also was sustained uh, across those four years. There were no new adverse events reported after the initial six-month study. As far as efficacy comparison, while the follow-up duration is generally the shortest for the MUSE, its results of PPI cessation, esophageal acid exposure, and adverse events are all comparable to the other endoscopic options. And this again shows that the, the, the results are comparable with good cessation of PPI use that was that proved durability in the midterm, decrease in Demister scores, and esophageal acid exposure, but still no randomized trial or long-term studies at this point. One group also performed a comparison of laparoscopic fundification with the use of the MUSE device in 27 patients. 11 underwent the MUSE. 16, either a Nissen or a Toupee. This is, uh, was a short-term follow-up study uh, with about five to six months of follow-up. Uh, all patients underwent the normal um, preoperative uh, studies and patients with BMI greater than 35 or severe esophagitis or large hiatal hernia were excluded from the MUSE arm. What you see on results is a improvement for both fundoplication and for uh, endoscopic fundoplication in the GERD HRQL scores, although the, there is a significant difference noted and a difference be, uh, between fundoplication and MUSE device with a higher improvement or better improvement with uh, fundoplication. MUSE also had a longer mean operative time, 89 versus 43 minutes. And this was the first iteration and studied iteration of the device, which had significant time between staple fires um, and has been optimized in later iterations. Uh, MUSE did have a longer mean length of stay, which was due to a single complication. Um, and that complication was recorded as an esophageal perforation treated with stenting and later an obesco clip. Uh, MUSE did have a higher mean post-op GERD score, although four versus nine compared to uh, fundification, laparoscopic fundification, although it was an improvement from the preoperative scoring. No significant differences were found between major complications, dysphagia, bloating, or postoperative PPI usage. So at UCSD is the elf on the shelf. So results are noted from previous studies. There's 
significant improvements in PPI usage, GERD HRQL scoring, and objective measures of reflux, especially in the short, and then some durability is seen in the midterm, uh, up to a published four-year follow-up. However, what we're seeing in our patient population is uh, patients that seem less interested in endoscopic reflux surgery and more requests for a Lynx procedure than anything else if they don't want a fundoplication. We also uh, believe there may be some role for obligate dissection of the hiatus in reflux disease as experienced with, our, with the Lynx device. Initially, it was a limited dissection, but now is, a, is often a full obligate dissection of the hiatus. So currently, MUSE is not on the shelf for routine use, but it does have potential. Uh, with modification and technique, longer-term data, larger randomized and sham trials, it may prove to be back on the shelf in the future. In conclusion, MUSE has been shown to be both efficacious and safe for the treatment of GERD in select patients with good short-term and mid-term outcomes. The outcomes are comparable to other endoscopic treatment modalities in terms of symptom relief and safety, but there is a paucity of long-term data and randomized control trials, so further study is needed. Again, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present uh, on this interesting work.